Bob, no pictures today. I got no tie on. <laughs> Please do. <laughs> Picture away. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the meeting of the Board of Selectmen for July 10th, 2018. There was no executive session this evening, so we will get right to our meeting and begin with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Before we get started, just a brief announcement. Um, there was a, a hearing posted for 7 p.m. on the Greyhound Friends. That hearing has been postponed until August 7th, but if there's anyone here who made a special trip and was not aware of it, I thought I'd let you know first off. So, um, first off, we always have our public forum. Are there any members of the public who would like to come up to the microphone and uh, share, their, share their ideas? shy group tonight. All right. I know a lot of people out here. I don't think shy is. Shy is not. No. <laughs> In that case, then, we will move to our consent agenda items. And first on the consent agenda are the board minutes. The Board of Selectmen will consider approving the June 19, 2018 Board of Selectmen minutes. Item two, resignations. The Board of Selectmen will consider accepting the following resignations. David Fine from the Capital Improvements Committee and Carol Walsh from the Council on Aging. Item three, the Board of Selectmen will consider accepting the following fire department gifts. $21,157.60 from the estate of Helen A. O'Brien and $1,000 from William D. Bridge II of 290 Turnpike Road, Westboro, Mass. Item four, street name approval, Chamberlain Street, Wayland Road, subdivision. The Board of Selectmen will consider approving the names of two new streets in the Chamberlain Street, Wayland Road, subdivision. The Planning Board has approved the subdivision plan. The new subdivision will extend Chamberlain Street and Whalen Road, and the developer proposes to continue the use of the names Whalen Road and Chamberlain Street. Item five, parade permit, Michael's Run Walk 5K. The Board of Selectmen will consider approving a parade permit from Ricardo Barraza on behalf of Michael Lisno Respite Center for the 21st annual Michael's Run Walk 5K to be held on Saturday, October 20, 2018 at 9 a.m. starting on Ash Street at Center School ending at the Hopkinton Town Common. Expected number of participants is between 300 and 350. And finally, item six, a special temporary alcohol license. The Board of Selectmen will consider approving a special temporary alcohol license for beer and wine only requested by Ellen Scanlon of Cornell's Irish Pub for an outdoor charity fundraiser event in support of Rich Shalosky to be held on July 28, 2018 from 1 to 6 p.m. in a tent outside of Cornell's Irish Pub, 229 Hayden Row. Are there any items which any of the board members would like to pull out for separate discussion? So I would like to pull out uh, number three Gifts. and number six. Gifts, Brandon Ketstone, and item six, which is the temporary license. Okay. Uh, Mr. Herr, Mr. Coutinho? No. No. Okay. Madam Chair, I move to approve items one, two, four, and five. Second. One, two, four, and five. I would like to just have a short word on item five, so we'll pull that out. Would you like to revise your motion, Mr. Herr? One, two, one, two, four, four. and four. All right. Motion to approve items one, two, and four of the consent agenda. Second. 
Second. Mode moved and seconded. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 And it is unanimous. Okay, Mr. Ted Stone, item three, gifts. So for item three, for these gifts, this, uh, the, the estate of Helen O'Brien, they're um, unbelievably generous, <coughs> uh, and they have been for years. And it, uh, I can't let a, a gift of 20, almost over $20,000 go unnoticed without, without a special thanks coming from us. Um, and to say uh, what, a, what a great donation, it's going to a great, uh, you know, the gift is going to a great fund. So uh, thank you very much to the estate of Helen O'Brien mm -hmm. and as, as well as uh, William Bridge. I'll just add on to what you said. I think I mentioned this before. A lot of newer people in town might not know Helen, may not have known who Helen O'Brien was. Um, her husband was a former superintendent of schools. They were wonderful neighbors all their lives. They gave back and gave back to the community. If it was picking up your kid after school, they were there. And just the fact that Helen's passed and she's still giving back to the community just says everything you need to know about, about Helen and her family. So um, I assume that these gifts always generate a note of thanks from the town. Yes, Lynn Lane? Mm -hmm. Yes. They always get a, get a thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, they do. Okay. And if, if I may, to the chair, you know, this is, I want people to understand that this, it, it seems like every other month we're, we're, approved, we're, we're accepting a, um, a gift of 20, 30, 40, I think there was even a $60,000 gift. Uh, several months ago, and so the, the, the generosity is just amazing, and it really, really, uh, uh, it's appreciated. But uh, mm -hmm. and they go to good use. They you know, sure do. people, if, if anybody noticed the, uh, the new pickup truck that the uh, police department uses, that, that was used by, that was paid for by one of the gifts. Helen, Helen O'Brien. Yep. Absolutely. Well, with that, I request a motion to accept the gift to the fire department from the estate of Helen A. O'Brien in the amount of $21,157.60 and a gift to the fire department from William Bridge III in the amount of $1,000. So moved. Second. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 <coughs> and it is unanimous. Okay. On to... The parade permit for Michael's run and walk, and my only, um, they're not really questions, it was just I, I would like to see that the permit, when it's issued, includes um, the fire department requested that they be consulted for medical and um, communication plans, the police department wants a one month prior to issuance uh, contact to, to finalize, uh, I mean one month prior to the event uh, to finalize, and also on the issue of the litter, uh, the plan spoke about the common, um, there really should be a sweep done of the entire course, so could we just make sure that what is issued indicates those, those requirements? So I guess the conditions would be that uh, litter control include a, uh, a sweep of the entire course and that both Hockington Fire and Hockington Police um, be consulted for um, details on, pl on planning. Madam Chair, I move item five with those conditions outlined. Second. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, it is unanimous. Okay. Item six, special temporary alcohol license for um, Cornell's Irish Pub, Mr. Ted Stone. Yeah, so historically, um, Cornell's has, although this is the first one that I've come across from Ms. Scanlon, uh, I, can, I know that for at least, as long as I can remember, whenever something is going on in town, not whenever, but a majority of the time, when something's going on in town where something has adversely affected someone in town, uh, the place Cornell's has been a great venue to do a fundraiser. I ran one when I was just 20 years old for uh, an old cop, uh, Harry Carver, and he was going through a tough time. We had a fundraiser there, it went off without a hitch. It was a great time. Uh, we've had- You were 20 years old? 
21 at least. I thought you said 20. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He said 20. <laughs> I can. Just to be clear. I, I think I was I know it. Ellen would not allow that. I was, I was, I was the organizer. Recording. And I was strictly drinking Fresca, I'm sure. So, so anyway, so I was in my mid twenties, closer to thirty, probably. It's getting older is the day so, Yeah. So regardless, Harry Carver was a, a fixture in town. It's going through a tough time. Townspeople came together. We had a fundraiser at Cornell's. What went off without a hitch? Uh, Lenny Holden's son had a uh, was going through a tough time. Through the my one wish, we had a something at Cornell's. It. It raised a lot of money for a great cause. It helped that kid, you know, have a, go on a trip. Uh, Richie Shalosky is a, a great friend of mine, lifelong friend of mine, and I will tell you that he's going through a tough time. And to see that the tradition of Cornell's coming through and helping out, donating and helping out to someone from town who's a fixture in town, uh, it, it's nice to see that this is, you know, it's not just the name, it's the concept of Cornell's helping out, and, and I love to see that this is going on. So with my whole heart, I, I, uh, I support this. So I'll second it. Um, I, it certainly sounds like a wonderful event. I just want to double check, and I see Mrs. Scanlon is here. Uh, there were a couple items that had been raised, and I know Maria sent a note uh, about the size of the tent needing a permit and meeting fire codes, um, result, getting approval from the high school for overflow parking, and also the police detail. Um, can you just speak to those, Mrs. Scanlon? Have those all been uh, set in order? I know you guys always do a great event, so I'm sure you'll work it out, but I just want to dot we those start with the, um, with the tent. The tent, they said if it kept it under 400 square feet. Oh, okay. The permit, so, and it is, it's 300 square feet. There you go. Uh, we got permission from Mr. Bishop, the principal of the high school. He said there's no problem parking there. Okay. We also got permission from Rob Carnell that he's opening the backfields uh, to let cars mm -hmm. go in there. Um, what else have we got? Please so with the detail officer. Um, it's gonna cost a lot of money to do that, especially for a benefit. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We feel like if we have those open spots out back now, which we didn't have access to before, and we have the high school parking lot, and we would have an employee outside making sure cars aren't parking on the street, making sure they're going out back, or making sure they're just going to the high school, mm -hmm. then maybe we could possibly not have a detail officer because it's just gonna be a costly thing for a benefit, and it might take away from that. So no, I hear the, the employee would be on the Cornell premises. In the parking lot. In correct. the parking lot, not on the street, not directing street. traffic, right? but directing no. traffic to get off the street off and into the, the parking lot. And because we normally don't park down into the, into the uh, baseball fields. Yeah. So now we can. So we want to make sure that people are aware of that. Yeah, yeah. We'll put no parking signs in the street, like um, at the end of the parking lot, saying no parking in the street. Yeah. On the invite, on the Facebook invite, it says no parking on the on Hayden Row. We're doing as much as we can yeah. to avoid possibly yeah. having a detail officer there. That'd be okay, Madam Chair, if they have an employee just getting people going back into that. Field and also, and like yeah. we're expecting maybe right now we're up to about sixty people. Yeah. But we're expecting them. They're not all coming at one o'clock. It's yeah. kind of, you know, yeah, people yeah. are coming, some yeah, are yeah. going, some will stay, some won't stay. So it's not like we're getting 60 people sure. at the same yeah. time. Yeah. No, I, Mr. Catino. Yeah, through the chair. Um, if, if, if I could ask the lieutenant, right. is there a number that, that you know, I, I, th I thought it was, it was over 100 or something that, that we um, that we requested some other venues to, to have a detail? Or is there a, isn't there a, a minimum uh, uh, number? Is there, is there a threshold? For a detail? No. Um, you know, 60, 75 people, you know, with monitors probably could be okay. They're going to be on patrol, and if something yeah. were to yeah. get out of control, now, they're going to get a phone call, so. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right? For any alcohol involved detail that's outside of a venue, a traditional venue, it's very customary. Could you, could you repeat that? It's, so, it's present that what Joe said again. So it's not necessarily the number, I think. I have speculated, I wasn't brief on it, but we, um, it's probably more to do with being able to amend. If you had 65 or 70 people in the courthouse, you would have a detail. So if I could just ask you, 
was was the remark about the police detail more of a crowd control issue or a parking issue? Because it sounds like they are trying to find ways to assure that the parking is managed by you know civilians. Or, or was or, do you think? I think one choice of parking. Okay. No. Oh, okay. Okay. So if I could just jump yes, in on Mr. Her. My, my view is we have a license holder in town yeah. that their livelihood is that license. Yeah asking for a special license to go outside to do a great thing. Uh, they're not going to jeopardize their livelihood for the next 364 days over one day, so I'm sure they're going to be responsible with how they handle this particular license, yeah. and it's not going to be a free-for-all. So. Yeah. No, we're taking everything yeah. into consideration. Yeah. We're getting porta potties put outside, yeah. so we have doormen on the door, so we don't exceed our right. 77 <laughs> people in Cornell's. Yeah, so if, we're doing if this was an outdoor tent, and 100 people were coming or 200 people were coming and they didn't have a license the rest of the year, I would think the detail would be something we would need because they're I'm fresh sure. and they're new to what they're doing. Right. This, I think, is an established business right. that gets the yeah. whole process and gets how yeah. serious we are about yeah. them behaving, right. and I think they will. Yeah. Beautiful. No, I, you know, I always, if our police or fire have a comment, I always pay attention to that because we really respect their requests we're all on the same page here so I just wanted to follow through on that and understand the gist of that and it does sound that you know seem like it was more a parking traffic management issue which can be can be managed in a less expensive way <laughs> so okay I think we're, we're all comfortable with that and it seems to me that mr. Kamalo if I may yes um, respectfully I would suggest to the board that it's clear that the board would support not having a detail. Can that detail, no pun intended, be discussed with the police department? Would be my request. Can the detail of us not requiring a detail be discussed with the police department? You no, know, the fact that it, there's, a, there's a very good relationship between the owner and the department. <coughs> I think the owner should go and articulate the plans that would not require detail to the police department. Make sure that the police department understand what the plan is, right. and that if there's any, if they, if they may have recommendations in terms of how best to manage. Sure. Mm -hmm. And maybe yeah. another thought, not yeah. to muddy the water, because I want to get this done and yeah. move on, yeah. is we could waive, or can we waive, the fee that they would have to pay to have that detail? No, we cannot. I'm not saying. The no, the contract would be can't. I'm not saying that the, the details get taken care of, but the charge to the fundraiser from the community could be waived, mm -hmm. right? No, no. We can. I think we can waive the the, the, the fee for the temporary alcohol. Yes, yes. we've done that before. Yeah, yeah. but no Which detail. We, okay. All right. So Separate, let's step it vote now. We can debate that later, but um, I'm comfortable trying to proceed without a detail, a paid detail, Me and too. the applicants sorting it out with the police, and if there's any concerns, we'll hear about it and go from there. Lieutenant, are you comfortable with that? Yes. Okay. And the fact that we don't meet again, we would have to be able to issue the license tonight with a provision that these, de no pun intended, these details be worked out. All right. Cool. All right, well, then. Okay. Good. Would someone yeah. like to make a motion? No, we have, we have, we, we, we have a motion. There's a motion that's been seconded. Mm -hmm. okay. Do we need to add that provision in or just there, let it go? Yeah, he made a motion that seconded it. And okay. then we, then we oh, I thought he was just session. saying he supports it. And, oh. Yeah, I didn't. Oh, okay. Then. Well, I'll make a motion. I, okay. I, I move to accept uh, item five and, uh, I'm sorry, item six uh, for mm -hmm. the temporary alcohol license for beer and wine uh, for Cornell's for the Richie Shalosky fundraiser on the 28th of July. 6 p.m. With the understanding. One to, six, one to 6 p.m. Yeah, 1 to 6 p.m. With the understanding that they'll work out the details with the police if need be. All right, so there's uh, and I'll second, second that. to that. All right, all is in order. All motion has been made and seconded. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 And opposed is unanimous. Okay, good luck. Thank you. Thank you. We are. Very close to on schedule. 6.50 p.m. and we have a joint planning board, board of selectmen meeting um, for a planning board appointment. The board of selectmen and planning board 
will jointly appoint one member to fill a vacancy on the planning board to a term to expire at the May 2019 annual town election. Applications have been received from Patrick Atwell, Robert Benson Jr., Carol DeVerve, and Matthew Kisner. Um, yeah, just bring the chairs, I guess. Hello, Madam Chair. So we have six planning board members four. and we have four board of selectmen, so we have a total of ten. So that means that we will need a majority of six votes to appoint. Deb may be coming, Madam Chair, just Okay. We'd welcome, she, we'd we'd welcome that, that odd number. We'd welcome. We'd welcome the odd number. Yeah, we never really had a problem doing this with an even number. <laughs> <laughs> Historically. Uh, and let's see, how many of our applicants are here? One, two, three, four. Good. Um, can you bring, could we all four come up perhaps, move one, uh, two more chairs so that we can speak with everyone at the same time? That would work. Good idea. Yeah. Okay. That works. All right, so um, before we get started, I'm just going to go over the procedures that we will use. Um, this is the procedure that has been adopted formally by the Board of Selectmen. After we, we will speak with all the candidates and ask you some questions, ask you to make a statement, and then when we get to voting, Step one, the chair states, before I entertain a motion, I would like to ask each of the board members to indicate which candidate they prefer for the planning board position. So this will be verbal. Step two, each member states his or her preference. If one candidate is preserved by a majority of board members, the chair will state, I will entertain a motion to appoint the preferred candidate to the planning board for a term expiring at the May 2019 annual town election. The motion is made and the board proceeds to vote. If no one candidate is preferred by a majority of the board members, but two candidates are preferred by more board members than the others, the chair will state, I entertain a motion to appoint a candidate to the planning board to a term expiring at the 2019 annual town election by selecting between one of the most preferred candidates and the other most preferred candidate. The motion is made and the board proceeds to vote. So is that clear to everybody? We will, it will be an open ballot, but it will be a verbal ballot, not paper in the interest of time. Okay. And Mrs. Lazarus, would you be the tally keeper for sure. us? Okay. Yes. If we are, have the opportunity to ask questions of the candidates, I was going to suggest that we try to ask the same question or let every candidate respond to the same question. Absolutely, we, we should, and so we should avoid asking a question to only one candidate. Please try to give everyone a chance to respond to the same question. And Carol is not here. Mm -hmm. Carol was not able to come with an email. Okay. Would that be acceptable for Mrs. Kramer to at least say a few words about, about Carol? Sure. Okay. Well, then let's get started. Um, and Mira, why don't you just tell, give a few words on Carol's behalf. A lot of us already know Carol, because uh, she did a term on the planning board. But Will you be answering her questions? <laughs> <laughs> I think maybe I should say Alex. Um, so yeah, so she apologizes for not being able to be here. It is uh, you know, one of those things when you plan something that isn't necessarily on the county. Um, I've known Carol for about 20 years. She's been active in town government nearly as long as I have. In fact, I have. Um, this is diverted blame for a lot of the uh, involvement that I have uh, undertaken. She did serve a sentence a term on the planning board um, of five years, and I think that she proved herself to be uh, temperate, um, prepared, 
deliberate, fair, balanced. I know she served with you, Mr. Wright. Um, I don't know who else she served with. Um, I know that she does uh, favor um, certainly a balance of needs between neighbors in town and with developers. Um, she could certainly be described as being somebody who prioritizes um, conservation and uh, preservation as well. She is an accountant by trade, very detail-oriented, um, always well-prepared, and I specifically, personally asked her to put her in, and I'm happy it's here. Thank you very much. If I can just add to that, if it sounds okay. Sure, Mr. Durso. Um, I've known Carol for half a time, so <laughs> a decade. Uh, she's one of the co-founders of the Green Committee, the Sustainable Green Committee, and um, she was a member of the Planning Board of Liaison to that committee, and I've uh, worked with her for a number of years, and she was also a good resource as a former Planning Board member when I would have questions. And over the past year, with the uh, issue going on with Chamberlain and Wayland, she was, even though she was affected by it, she was very objective, and. Um, had a lot of good insights into the situation, and um, I think I'd like to say she, I think she'd make a great member back on the board. Thank you, Mr. Kisner. Thank you, Chair. You introduce yourself. Tell us a little about you and why you were interested in joining the planning board. Certainly. So, hello. It's a pleasure to be here again in front of a larger group than last time. But thank you nonetheless for allowing me to be here. So my name is Matthew Kisner. I moved to the town, oh my, oh my god, almost a year ago. I don't know where the time has gone. And it's been my absolute pleasure to be here. I think when you move to a community like Hopkinton, your goal is to be a part of something like this and to have the opportunity to be part of growing the town that you chose to start a family in the next phase of your life in. And the people in this room, many of whom I would already consider to be if not mentors, certainly influencers in the way in which I function and am trying to grow, have done nothing but usher me along that path and let me know that this is the sort of town that appreciates that level of enthusiasm and, and engagement. In my professional life, I work in corporate biotech. I manage a cross-functional team of about 25, essentially doing detail-oriented root cause investigation for pharmaceutical failures. So if you have anybody who's taking a rare genetic disease drug, you're welcome. The, the product's usually pretty good. What does this mean? It means that I understand by nature how to be collaborative and hear both sides of an issue because when you're dealing with manufacturing and quality, there's always that give and tug, just like there is between the community and the development, the growth and the conservation. And that's the sort of perspective that I'm hoping I'll have the opportunity to bring to the planning board along with the working relationships that I've had the opportunity to cultivate with people like Muriel and then Mary and Deb on the Zoning Advisory Committee, as well as my recent attempt to join the Zoning Board of Appeals. I would like to say that I was interested in zoning and town planning and development before it was cool. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you. Mr. Atwell, I think a lot of people know you from the election, but give us a give us a rundown and where you see yourself fitting in on the planning board. You might regret it someday, I don't know. <laughs> All right, Patrick Atwell. Um, so I moved to this town five years ago, as you guys already know, through uh, my running for selectmen. My agenda hasn't changed. You know, I've seen this town grow at a rapid pace, so you know, that's a concern of mine, because we, we need to grow to survive and to sustain, but we also have to preserve that small town cultural feel. So I think with my uh, legal background, my legal studies, I am very detail-orientated, um, uh, researching facts and everything else, and the uh, MGLs, uh, you know, it's just second nature to me, you know understanding that, negotiating <clears throat> uh, contracts with the union I've done for 20 years. So hearing both sides of the story, weighing issues, the pros and cons, what could happen, you know, what might happen is something that I'm used to and I can make those tough decisions when need be. So joining the planning board I think is a great step in getting more involved in the town, which I've been trying to do as you guys noticed. Um, I think I'd be a great asset and a team player and help, help out the planning board. Thank you. Mr. Benson, welcome. Thank you. So, uh, to some of you uh, I've never met, some I've known for 25 years that are uh, like Brendan, I've uh, known for 25 years. So, I moved to Hopkins in 1986 as a child in sixth grade. So, I've lived here a long time, seen a lot of uh, progress of the town, um, and the town changes. So, graduated from Hopkins High School in 1992. Graduated from UMass Amherst in electrical engineering in 98, MBA from Babson in uh, 2006, 
Uh, I'm an executive at Tybersoft, a software company, high-tech software company in Westboro. Um, and I think it's my, uh, my time to do my part to help the town with future planning and zoning. Um, having escalated my career, I think I'm well-versed in managing difficult situations, managing both sides and both points of view. I also have two children in Hopkins School System that just finished second grade. Um, they're entering third grade, uh, twin boys. So I'm very interested in the future growth of the town, uh, how the planning board impacts the future growth of the town. Um, I don't think there's another candidate that has the same perspective that I might have, having lived here for as long as I have. Um, and I just think it's uh, time for somebody um, that has that perspective to join the planning board and help map out the next 25 years of Hawk. Thank you very much. Board members of both boards, um, would anyone like to ask a question of the candidates? Mrs. Kramer. Um, I wonder if you could, um, considering the role of the planning board, um, the role of the, the zoning, um, the current growth pattern and place where Hawkington finds itself, if you could uh, just tell me, tell us a little bit about where you see the key issues are for the planning board that may not yet be being fully addressed. <laughs> Mr. Benson. Uh, so uh, I think the planning board is going to be every large organization, every developer of uh, homes has a lot of financial might. And the planning board needs to be able to understand the financial might of these organizations and the political power and political investment they'll make to get the town behind any initiative. So the planning board has to be equally well versed in combating like anything that, that is ultimately at the um, detriment of the town because large developers have just so much financial might to get zoning boards and townspeople behind initiatives that might not be in the best interest of the town. There's, um, there's the affordable housing initiatives and, and rules the planning board has to abide by but uh, it just needs to have a level head and basically be able to get resources involved when there's large financial institutions like uh, multi-billion dollar development organizations um, that are gonna come in and uh, try to take advantage of available land in Hopkinton. And the planning board needs to be able to uh, understand those challenges and how they can best position uh, the town for the next 25 years. Well, I see that the uh, residential growth has already reached pretty much its max, but just like you said, with big corporations coming in, looking to plant their feet in this town, uh, you know, it's very important that the planning board step up to, uh, to regulate, to monitor, to make sure that it's the right sort of business that we're bringing in this town. I think uh, to hide from that, you know, we shouldn't, we should be allowing these big corporations to come in. Uh, that's a very important step, but I think uh, the planning board, you know, is a key role in that. And, should be p paying close attention to that. So that's something that needs to be addressed, bringing in more uh, corporations. Uh, before we go further, I just need to state um, it, it is just a little past 7 o'clock. At 7 o'clock, there was, again, a posted public hearing for the Greyhound Friends, which, as I stated earlier, um, will not be held tonight. That's been postponed till August 7th at the request of the applicant. So please, Mr. Kisner. Thank you. So for me, I, I won't try to speak about big corporations, little corporations. I'm not going to try to sit here to misrepresent what my experience is or isn't. I think this is going to be an opportunity for me to listen and learn. Rather, what I would say the biggest challenge that I see the planning board facing, and it's the one I brought before you the last time we spoke, the landscape of this town is changing. And pardon, but intended pun, the age in the town is pushing much closer to 50 than it is 40 or it is 30. And as that age continues to creep and shift, so too will the interests of the town. I think the planning board plays a beyond critical role in trying to balance what the development of the town looks like and what sort of agenda it is we're going to pursue, just as we would with zoning. Do we want a hotel? Do we want taller buildings? Do we want to bring in big business? Do we want to do any of that at the expense of the small town feel? I don't know the answers to those questions. I think only the community can answer those questions. I think the challenge that the planning board is very likely aware of, so I apologize for not directly answering what you haven't foreseen. Rather, I, I think the unintended challenge that you're going to see is that 
the traditional thoughts of the town are going to start to shift in the near future. How responsive will we be? How anticipatory will we be? And will we have the opportunity to capitalize and be ahead of those shifts instead of responding to them? That's what I would suggest. I'd like to ask a question. Mr. Terso, please. All the applicants that are here before us. Um, I myself was once where you guys are. I was appointed before I was elected. Um, and one of the questions here we have is, uh, how do you stay in the loop in the information loop on matters coming before you? So, and I kind of look at that question and say, well, what did I do before I was on the planning board? How did I, you know, how did I stay involved in those things? Um, so if you could, let me, let me answer, let me ask the question clearly, I'm sorry. Uh, how do you typically stay in the information loop on matters coming before you? matters that are active in front of the town. Uh, I guess, I'm not sure I quite understand your question, but staying a loop for me in my <coughs> personal life, in my legal studies is, you know, I just, it's reading, it's researching, it's, that's how I stay in a loop, you know, I'm constantly, you know, picking up the latest version of Mass uh, Lawyers Review, things like that, and always looking at the laws that are changing, keeping up to date that way, you know, that's on me, myself, to do that research, so, you know, that's how I stay in the loop, is to reading, uh, word of mouth, you know, just socializing, networking, and talking. Uh, so I think it, it, yeah, I don't think this is unique to being on the planning board or any other fact of, facet of life. If, uh, if you're in a position where lots of information is presented to you on a daily basis, you need to interpret that information and make your decisions based off as much data as you can. So um, like there's, there's many different reports, there's reading, there's visual representation. I was just reading today that the, the human brain interprets visual representation 60,000 times faster than uh, reading text. So um, I'm a very visual person, <laughs> uh, like everybody, but uh, it's just a matter of where you get the information and being able to make good data-driven decisions once you have that information. Um, I don't think there's any secret sauce to it. As the millennial sitting at the table, this is easily the longest I've been not looking at my device and getting an active data feed from the internet and the rest of the world. So my first response would be, you're punishing me. I usually am getting an active update as we would be speaking. My second response, and less facetiously, would be this. It's our job to be part of the community, and I'm going to keep reemphasizing that because I think the issues that come before the planning board, they start first not in front of the board, but at your neighbor's table at a forum just like this, in the Hockington Independent, at the Truck Festival. What are people talking about? What's going on in our neighboring towns? We're not isolated here. We're part of a broader community. What are they talking about? What's coming before them? What are, again, I'm gonna come back to the shifts and the trends that are going on, not just in the community, but at the state at large. What's being discussed? I don't think it's ever the right approach to bury your head in the ground. So first, you need to be ears up, opportunity ready to hear what's being discussed, and then, as my esteemed colleagues here mentioned, yeah, absolutely. You read, you research, you take things in, but at the end of the day, I think you have to just be receptive and aware of the surroundings around you and do your diligence to make sure you're prepared to give the people the hearing that they deserve and be informed enough to make a balanced decision. I think all, all three answers are, from your own perspectives, hit the nail on the head, so thank you. Um, one of the things that um, was mentioned when I was first appointed was previous activity on committees. Um, and I know that last year I nominated you for the zoning um, advisory committee. This year you ran for board of selectmen and you have been recently appointed to the Advent celebration committee. Okay. Yeah. And, and I know you've been in town for a while uh, and you're looking to get involved. Yeah. Um, so you guys want to maybe talk a little bit about what your view of, of, that, of what town committees do and how they work together? Well, that makes sense. <laughs> in Hawkins, especially. Oh, all right. <laughs> It's ready to talk to you about Chicopee, but so I would say candidly, and this is going to sound like a strange response, it's where the sausage is made, but I'm not afraid to look at it. And I think that's really important. My time on zoning advisory, albeit limited, could not have been more, and I know John will appreciate this pun, illuminating. You would not believe the sorts of discussion and passion you can drum up about just how bright a light is supposed to be on a financial institution at the corner of Lumber Street. Oh my dear goodness. 
hearing what those passions are and hearing how they're actually impacting the community. I don't live there. I don't see that light. That isn't part of my day. That isn't something that's keeping me up at night. But there really are people in town that is impacting, that it is affecting. And it brings that community perspective to you that, wow, the role of the committee is to actually take yourself above the individual and to hear what's going on in the town, what's of a concern, to take that feedback in and discuss with your peers, and then try to do something to positively impact and influence it. And whether or not it's the will of the town, it doesn't matter whether the law is passed or we make an update to the bylaws. What matters is that we discuss it, that we validate that the opinions of the people in town matter to us, that we discuss them in an intelligent and respectful manner, that we provide that discourse and we let them know we hear you. And I think more than anything, that's the role of the community and the committees is to let them know that there is a place where you can come for any given issue, and we're here, we hear you, and we respect your opinion. We may not agree, but gosh darn it, you're going to get to give it. So the role of committees, you know, here in town, they all work together cohesively. Each one, you know, works with another, works with another, works with another, and that's how we get to certain decisions. So that's very important that it's a cohesive group. It's not one committee stands out more than the other, but like my colleague just said over here, it's listening to the people of this town is where it starts, and that's where, you know, that's where the foundation is, is hearing their, some complaints or some of their issues and taking that to the committee and discussing it amongst the committee members themselves and coming to a decision. But, you know, all the committees work together hand in hand and it's, you know, the, it's the people that, that matter, the residents. Yeah, so um, I think it's kind of, in a nutshell, Hopkins Town government um, basically dramatically impacts the quality of life for all the residents within Hopkins. So all the, all the residents uh, in practice, the boards and then the government work on behalf of the residents, but there's recommendations and decisions by people that have intimate knowledge with everything that goes on within the town, make important recommendations that a lot of the townspeople listen to when they don't have the detailed and level of information. So what do I think the town government, planning boards, other boards do? is they take the best interests of all the townspeople and make important decisions and recommendations based off of all people in town, but have all the details and information to go through and analyze all those situations. Like you mentioned illumination of a, of a light. Um, like not, the average citizen in town is not gonna do that. There's gonna be three residents that live around that, that light, that care, but it's up to uh, the zoning advisory committee on that instance to make a decision based on uh, what they know and what's in the best interest of the town. I'll ask a question. Um, I spent a lot of years on the planning board. Uh, a lot of people look to join the planning board thinking that they want to stop development or slow down the pace of growth in the town. A lot of people are concerned about that, understandably so. But the challenge one finds on that particular board is, as we all know, private property owners have property rights. They have rights to use their land and gain their value out of the land. Um, at the same time, the board is, in a way, the town's representative, but it is a quasi-judicial board to uh, <coughs> treat the applicants fairly and apply the, the subdivision, the laws that are already written down. So there's a fine line, there's a balancing act, um, and the planning board <coughs> members have to be able to find those windows of opportunity where they can respect the rights of the property owner to use their property um, balanced by the wishes of the town. Um, do you just have some, have some thoughts on um, how the planning board can um, balance those two needs and um, move the town forward while respecting the needs of both the citizens and the property owners? Any thoughts? I know you'll, you'll learn about those things when you're on the board, where, where your opportunities are, but uh, have, have any of you uh, had some ideas about that? Uh, so I can start. Uh, so there's laws in place, there's rights of property owners, there's um, fairness to a property owner, there's the, the interests of the general population of the town and especially people around that potential development. And it's just taking uh, what is fair and reasonable, as well as what is legal and what's in the best interest. And you marry those kind of three together, 
and you come up with a recommendation and direction that's okay and one that might not be uh, perceived as, that might not be okay and then you try to uh, make it more okay. So that's my thoughts. <laughs> Uh, so the uh, biggest property right for an owner is the right of use and enjoyment of your land, you know, and that's that fine line you're talking about where we don't want to step on toes. The, you know, there's also eminent domain and all types of other legal issues, but I think, you know, balancing all of it, you would have to take, you know, all the facts that need to be looked at, weigh the issues and make sure you're not crossing legal, you know, boundaries and it's, you know, I haven't sat on the planning board yet, but I'm sure it's a, it's a juggling act to make sure that uh, and to stretch for those windows of opportunity, I think comes with experience and and the team as a whole would you know point those out. Understanding that you need to do that. So first, just and I apologize, it's a point of detail orientation because it's just killing me. Either Chairman uh, Selectman Tedstone and Selectman Her have switched places, or their placards are transposed, and I just can't <laughs> stop looking past it. Oh, you're right. We look alike. We look alike. <laughs> so. As we talk about as we talk about the balancing acts between the two between the town interests and the corporate interests, I think what you're really asking is how do you effectively not drive because I don't think you can drive this, but how do you move towards compromise? When you talk about balance, you're talking about you give a little and I give a little, and how do we find that happy medium? And again, and I don't want to sound like I'm being evasive, it's really going to be case by case. For one street, it might be preserving a green belt or a stretch of trees that exists lining the road because it reminds them of when they grew up and it was totally undeveloped, and that's all they really want. For another one, it might be, can you put the solar farm two miles away instead of one mile away? It's a little louder than we think, but we love the green technology and we just don't want to get rid of it. Yeah, I don't know why that specific zoning issue was on my mind. These are the sorts of discussions that you have to have, and you can't have a one-size-fits-all approach. You can't try to necessarily incentivize or disincentivize. You need to let the residents speak to you and tell you what it is they're looking for. And in my experience before the planning board, in fact, I had the pleasure of being here once when you actually gave fines to a developer, my stance would be that you need to be an iron hand in a velvet glove. At the end of the day, it is private property, and it's owned by the developer at that point, and they do have certain rights, but so do we as a town. And if you move a stone on a scenic road that you're not supposed to move and you darn well knew it, we're going to have a conversation about it. And if we have to have a second one, it's going to be a sterner conversation. If we have to have a third, we don't even want to tell you what that looks like because we want to assume you're going to get it after the second. So ultimately, it's a case-by-case case where you're looking to understand what the need of the selective group is where the town is going and how to balance that. And I can't give you a general answer other than I'm ready to listen. Fair enough. Madam Chair? Mr. Uh, Mr. Fran. <laughs> Mr. T. Young. Uh, what do you believe individually is your single greatest asset that you think you guys will bring to the planning board? Start in reverse order. Me. All right. I wasn't going to reach from the mic. What do I bring? Tough to say without having been on the board. I, I had a manager once give me some really good career advice that I've tried to follow, which is no matter how smart you are, there is no substitute for sample size. Wisdom can only be gained through experience. So perhaps it's that, it's that perspective that I would bring is that, I don't know, Fran, I like to listen. It's pretty obvious I like to talk. I'm an articulate guy and I'm data oriented, but at the end of the day, I don't have quite the history of this town that everybody else here does, or even some of the people up there. And I would submit that's not necessarily a bad thing because it gives me the opportunity to think outside the box and be a little bit more free from the strictures of the way things have been done. Not to challenge them just for the sake of challenging them, but to challenge them because maybe it's time to challenge them, to think a little bit differently. So I bring the perspective of inexperience, but not ignorance and not willful inability to learn. Rather, I bring an enthusiasm for it, a desire for it, and the ability to articulate the things I don't understand, and the very real willingness to ask when I am concerned, confused, or looking to hear more. So I think the biggest asset I would bring, other than my charm, would be, uh, <laughs> is I'm very detail-oriented. Like I said, doing legal studies, I take in every single fact that I need to take in, you know, and I research and research and research. I look at, you know, case law, hypotheticals, and I run everything through my mind before I say I make that decision. So 
my quickness to understand certain laws, my way of researching data analysis, um, my experience negotiating. Uh, I don't see things just black and white. I have that ability to you know, give and take. So I just think that 20 years of doing that with uh, unions, I, I just, it, it'd be well-rounded. Yeah. So I think I was going to say similar stuff to the first two guys, but I'll change my answer. <laughs> so I think uh, living in Hockenden um, for as long as I have, like when I go to uh, my kid's Little League game or soccer game, there's no less than 200 parents at those fields that I know. Um, so the ability to listen to people, have them talk to me, have their input directly input into the planning board, um, I think would be my greatest strength. I have a resource pool of just people I know and that know me that um, would allow me to make all the important data-driven decisions of what I'm good at uh, is making those decisions based off data. But I have all the input from everybody that is uh, around me. Um, in the interest of the hour, we do have some other agenda items. Um, it probably would be good to try to move this along. Is there one more question somebody is burning to ask, or could we perhaps move to the voting? i just make a quick comment. Mr. Hart. So uh, I don't have a question for the candidates. Uh, having sat here for a while and been on the planning board and appointed way back when, uh, before I got elected, et cetera, I think it's great to see the three of you here today, and Carol uh, named in the hat as well. She was on the board with me when I was there. Um, you're making it really hard, though, mm -hmm. honestly. You're making it really hard on us. Uh, I guess I appreciate that and the enthusiasm that everyone's bringing to the, uh, to the, to the opportunity. Uh, but uh, all three are excellent candidates. Carol's an excellent candidate. And uh, however this plays out, I sure hope you guys stay involved because you're, you're, you're hitting the nail on every question very well. And you're doing it from different perspectives, and it's still good stuff. So please hang in there with us. Uh, the town needs you, whether it's tonight or it's very soon in the future. So please hang in there with us. I really appreciate that, if I could say. This is great. Um, an excellent point. We're very lucky to have um, a lot of excellent, enthusiastic, and persistent candidates. I really respect the fact that um, the two of you have worked really hard to get involved. And, uh, and I hope that you continue to do that. Um, just speaking for myself, I would be proud to serve with anybody that is appointed. Would any of the board members like to speak for a moment to an ind regarding an individual candidate? I wouldn't like to speak <coughs> well, through you, Madam Chair. Okay. I wouldn't like to speak for any candidate specifically. I would like to go back a couple of years to my very first meeting as uh, as a member of the Board of Selectmen, um, and it it got up to be a, a pretty ugly um, procedure when we started doing this vote. Mm -hmm. um, very ugly, as a matter of fact. And, um, over time. Yeah. And I'm, I don't see that here. I don't, mm -hmm. I don't see that that's gonna happen here. Um, so, Mr. Kisner, every time you open your mouth, I like you more. Um, it doesn't mean that I didn't like you to begin with. I'm telling you. Now, some could say the opposite about other people. But. Uh, Mr. Atwell, same thing. Your, your persistence is great, and I've known Rob for, or Mr. Benson for uh, 25 plus years. Um, and, and I've known Mr. DeVere forever as well. So, this is not going to be a very easy decision at all. Not at all. Um, I thought it was going into it, and that's why I think it's great that the people come up and, and, and talk more and, and explain their points of view and, and what they bring, and, and uh, it's not going to be a, a, an easy decision for me whatsoever where I thought it was. So um, I echo the, the sentiments where I think we're lucky to have any of you four on the board. Uh, for three of the people that aren't placed today, I would certainly hope push, prod, that you all would move forward and, and continue your quest for, uh, to, to be on, the, on, uh, on some town government boards. I just did want to make a, a remark in Mrs. DeVere's benefit, seeing she is not able to be here, um, adding on to what Mrs. Kramer has said, that um, Carol, I think, served a full term on the planning board. Um, 
a lot of people in town have had some concerns about the planning board in the last year or so. They've been through a lot of changes, a lot of new faces, a big learning curve. Um, it has not been the smoothest road. And um, I do think that the town needs some stability and some steadiness on that board and some members who um, don't have as large a learning curve. Uh, and I just want to speak in Carol's favor because she is not here. Um, serving on her on the board with her, she her questions were insightful. She was level-headed. She understood the issues. She was always respectful. Um, her questions were spot on and um, always very fair-minded and very common sense in, in her dealings with the public and, and in her decision making. And um, I think that were she to rejoin that board at this point in time, it would be a very good stabilizing presence for a board that has a lot of new members and has some learning to do. So um, I just wanted to say that because Carol is not here to speak for herself and, and I strongly support her, her for that reason. Ready for a vote? Well, ready. I think we're ready for a vote. Um, again, the procedure that we have adopted is that it will be a voice vote, but each member, um, before I entertain a motion, I would like to ask each of the board members to indicate which candidate they prefer for the planning board um, position. And there being 10 people, oh, well, no, 11 now, we have 11 now. Okay, so we still need six. We still need a majority of six. So, um, for, the, for the record, Mr. Kamal, the required quorum is seven. Excuse me, the required quorum, okay. Uh, so, the required uh, quantum, yeah, quantum for the vote is seven, but it's based, it's based on the uh, board size. exactly. Okay, yeah. so regardless yeah. of the fact that there's only 11 voting, we still need seven, we still need seven. And so, we're going to do a straw poll in advance of an actual motion. No. That's what it will, sounds like. If we're announcing before we have a motion, what? That's a straw poll. We will ask each member to indicate which candidate they prefer for the planning board position. Each member states his or her preference. If one candidate is preferred by a majority of board members, that would be seven, the chair states, I will entertain a motion to appoint the preferred candidate to the planning board. Um, the motion is made and the board proceeds to vote. If no candidate is preferred by a majority, but two are preferred by more board members than the others, the chair states I entertain a motion to appoint a candidate to the planning board by selecting between X and Y. And the motion is made and the board proceeds to vote. Is that clear? So, Madam Chair. So what if that second case is not true that Maybe one person has five, another two have three. I mean, I know there's going to be a bunch of scenarios. Maybe we should have um, talked about them ahead of time. I don't know. But we should address them as they come. But that doesn't cover that. This, this just the first one is to hit seven. Right. The second one is to take the top two. Right. So what do we do if we don't have a well, two? This procedure well, just this just says if two candidates are preferred, then you pick the top two and vote amongst the top two. <coughs> All right, if we don't get that, we'll address it afterward. We'll address it. Okay. So, having said that, um, let me start on this side with uh, Mrs. Brooke. Um, I would choose number three, Carol DeBerg. Okay. That's for Carol DeBerg. Matt Kisner, and at first I was able to take him back and said, hey, it might be hard to work with. And second thought, I like, he's a very smart guy and he's going to challenge us. Thank you. Kisner. Okay. Carol DeVerve. Rob Benson. Patrick. Okay. Oh, well, so there's there's a couple. oh, I'm sorry. So two more to go. Just a friend. Claire, come on. Yeah. <laughs> to get uh, your sitting uh, way down. Rob Benson. Matt Kisner. 
Well, I don't think we could be any more divided. Yeah. One, three, two, one. Two, one. No. I think everyone has at least two, right? Two, three, two, two. And the top two are. Kiana and the Let's see, Kisner has three. I think, I think one of your scenarios is coming up. No, it's not four and three. We got four and three. Four and three. Yeah. Oh. Devoe and Kisner. Yes. Can we have the final count here. As for Carol, there were four. Uh, for Matt, there were three. Uh, for Patrick Atwell, there were two. Mm -hmm. And two for Benson. So the top two choices are Carol DeVerve and Matthew Kisner. So according to our procedure, I will entertain a motion. No, I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm sorry. If we have to vote again. Yeah. 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 No, no. Now, now to, I, I will entertain a motion to appoint a candidate for the planning board to a term expiring the 2019 annual election by selecting between Carol DeVerve and Matthew Kisner. Second. All right, the motion is made. Second. 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 Question on the motion. So the motion is those two individuals will now be considered. That's not, we're not picking one of those in this, yeah, okay. I'm a slow study. So I believe we will do another round of the same vote. We got a vote. A Discussion. voice vote. You need another term to get this down. <laughs> Mr. Paul. I would have to that we excuse the other two candidates. If they wish. So we should take a vote on the motion, which is to whittle it down. Yes. Before we do anything. Right. We, and, and I right. think that was seconded. Yes. 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 Second. Yes. Second. Yes. Second. Yes. Second. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Motion is made. Okay, now I'm really. Brian. Hold on. The, who made the motion? Right. What is the motion you're looking for? What are we talking about? I entertain a motion to appoint a candidate to the planning board a above candidate. by selecting between yeah. okay. Carol DeVerve and Matthew Kisner. So now legally six can carry this motion? Seven. 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 So what if it's six to five? Okay, fine. Again. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. The, motion is, the motion has been made. And We've had it before. Proceeds to vote. So just to be clear, though, we are excusing two of the candidates. Correct, but uh, they can stay right where yeah, they no, are. Yeah, I know. Understood. <laughs> okay. You never know what's going to happen. Oh. Um, but the point of order, Robert's rules. Uh, not, we don't not, go by Robert's rules. Yeah. Not, not in effect? No. Mm -hmm. Okay. Again. Mrs. Burke, you get to go first. Uh, I'm, I'm still confused. Well. I'm, hold on a second. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm still confused. We have a motion on the table in a second. Mm -hmm. And now we're going back to individuals no, having a conversation. We, should vote we have to vote on it. We have to vote that motion. Yes. Let's do a verbal vote. Okay. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. Mrs. Mrs. Wright. Mr. Hurd, the way... In the document that was provided to me right. by town council, is this yes. correct? Ah, now it's starting to make sense. No that, wonder it's so confusing. The motion to appoint a candidate by selecting between mm, Carol and Matt. Step four, the motion is made and the board proceeds to vote. Individually going around? Voting for the motion or for if, the candidate? If, uh, yes, I do. I, I, I thought, vote the okay, motion. so my understanding vote is we're voting the motion on the table at the moment is to go go to two candidates uh -huh. yes, yes. and if that motion passes we go to two candidates i would agree yes that's what i don't understand what we're doing no 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 no, no. mr kamala might help you he looks okay. like he's uh, itching to explain to you yes brian <laughs> Whenever he starts with Brian, he's mad at you. Yeah. No. Brian, I'll go down yeah, with you, yes. by the way. Yes. Based on the procedure that the board adopted and is following now, uh, there are now two candidates that the board is voting on, the combined board. There are two ways of doing it. We can simply call out the name and ask those who are in favor and register the number. The easy way of getting that is going through the individual votes 
the board members are announcing who they're supporting. That's the easy way of doing it. Yeah. Apparently that's the easy way. Yeah. Okay, so we have basically a motion. It's just an odd motion for me, but that Ray, if Ray put it forward, I didn't know that. If Ray put it forward. Same for me. All right, let's move along. We already went with Mrs. Burke, who said Carol. Uh, Mrs. Kramer. Carol. 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 Matt. Matt. Carol. 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 Matt. 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 Oh, six of them. So we have Seven. one, Seven. two, three, four yeah. for Matt. Seven. Two, three, four, five, six, and C seven. Seven for Carol. Okay. Seven for Carol. Okay. Carol Dever has been appointed. Um, oh, do we need to? No. Now we have. Now we have, to, now we have to vote the. Now we have to vote the motion that's still open. That was the vote. That was the vote. Politics are awesome. <laughs> <laughs> the vote is done. That was the vote. The vote is done. Carol Dever is yeah. appointed to a term of the planning board expiring at the 2019 annual town election. And may I remind everybody that there is a 2019 annual town election, which is the best way to get on an elected board. Honestly, easier. As Honestly, easier. So, yeah. all right. So before I was asking for the others, now may I be excused? Yeah, we may all be so excused. Thank you. You three definitely take. Like, don't don't let this go slow you guys down. Like, all three of you guys are great. Yep. Continue on. Persevere. If you want, expect to a couple of thumbnails and you see how smooth all this goes. Thank you. All right. All right. We are going to move along now to uh, the annual appointments by the Board of Selectmen. Um, we have uh, community, no, we do not have community preservation. We have Council on Aging, Cultural Council, Historical Commission, Marathon Committee, uh, Upper Charles Trails Committee, and Youth Commission uh, to appoint this evening. Um, I, we're going to take historical commission first because I believe a couple of the two candidates need to get out to another meeting. So, uh, Mr. Rowan, Michael Rowan is uh, the current chairman. Mike, come up, just uh, tell us why you want to keep doing this. <laughs> well, thank you for having me. Um, I've been chairman of the historical, historical commission for over three years. In that time, we've had some highs and lows. I think the most challenging point in my tenure has been the demolition of the toll house. It was a pegged mortise and tenon timber frame structure that I could have done more to save. But we've had some great successes. We, we have developed, we got CPC funding from McFarland Sanger House for the uh, stone bridge at Aikens Park. We have uh, convinced the town meeting to change the definition of demolition. We have a great relationship with the building inspection department, something that a lot of other towns, historic districts and building departments don't get along. We have good relationship as, a, as far as demo is concerned. And we just received a Mass Historic Commission matching grant to do a downtown historic study, which is almost complete as I speak now. So we've got a lot of things ongoing. I'd love an opportunity to continue. One of the things, the philosophy I have about the Historical Commission is pres preserving the legacy of the town, but more importantly, helping to educate the townspeople about that legacy. One of the members of your board has been very helpful in getting signage out in the community where we have historic properties. I'd like the opportunity to continue to do that. Thank you. I want to put in a word for Mike, because um, I've served on the commission with him for a number of years, and he took over as chairman and has been, quite frankly, the glue that holds that board together. Um, Mike has taken the bull by the horns and been more than just a chairman. He has been an initiator, a doer, a workhorse on that board. Um, and I will say from, from serving on that and a number of boards that, um, some boards, it involves showing up at the meetings, and that's kind of it. Um, not, the, not to take away from that, and there's a lot that goes on at those meetings, but the responsibilities kind of begin and end there. 
Historical Commission isn't one of those boards. There are projects to be um, developed, uh, uh, literal work to be done, um, contractors to meet with. Um, there's legwork, a lot of legwork, and a lot of work get, gets put in um, outside of simple monthly meetings. And um, the projects don't get done if there isn't somebody willing to do the horse work, and Mike's one of those guys. And um, so I, I, um, I just want to thank you for what you do because you, you really, uh, as I said, the glue that holds the board together, that's been what you've been. Well, thank you for your comments. Uh, you've been a mentor to me for many years now. So. And I know Mr. Haskins is here as well. Uh, I, if you want to just come up, Jim, and have a word as well. I know you're very active with the Historical Society. They're down there relentlessly working for them. Uh, another tough one. Another tough one, but <laughs> tell us about yourself. And, uh, My name's Jim Haskins. Uh, I've been in town now for three years. Uh, I volunteer at the Historical Society, and I'm also on the board for the Historical Society. I'm uh, researching the early indentures and early uh, leases for Hopkinton uh, and compiling a list and digitizing all the early leases. So uh, I would just, I have just gotten my life back after years of disability and I've been able to extend my love for research and history into the historical society you now I'd like to reach out and uh, work in the town in the same facet. Question Mr. Haskins? Yeah. Uh, I don't have any questions. Um, I think we have got two great individuals in front of us this evening for this appointment, and um, uh, it's a tough decision, but thank you both for being here. Thank you. Uh, ditto, Mr. Herr. Um, I guess I just have one more comment about the process um, with the current chairman being before us, who has been a very strong leader for the board. Um, most of us remember a couple months back when there was an opening and it was, <laughs> there have been times we couldn't get anybody to join the historical commission, either feast or famine. It was quite a content, contentious hearing, shall I say, sure. with a number, a couple of other people that also were vying for the appointments. Um, we had the blessing of more more candidates we knew what to do with and there were two individuals who were appointed as associate members because there was not an opening um, one of those members has been serving and, and attending meetings regularly and doing the work of a board member um, I don't believe that with the understanding that perhaps there would be another position opening I don't believe that individual considered challenging the chairman for his position um, but at the same time, where there is an associate member who has been in waiting, um, personally, I, I would have a hard time understanding a, an appointment other than the chairman, where we have we put two associates in, in waiting for an opening. Do, do you understand what I'm saying? I don't know if you recall that meeting. I do recall the meeting. I do recall the associate positions. Um, I understand what you're saying. I'm, I'm delighted to see all this interest, but um, I really feel that, you know, given the situation, that situation where there is already, there are already two associate members who are looking to be moved into a full-time, and we have an active chairman, um, I, I would strongly recommend um, reappointing our, our chairman. Okay. Um, so we're in annual appointments by Board of Selectmen and we're ready to make a motion, is that correct? Yes. Okay. Uh, I approve that we appoint Mike to serve uh, another term on the Historical Commission. Three-year term. Three-year term, sorry. Is there a second? Second. 
All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 And approve, opposed, it is unanimous. Mike, thank you for all that you do. And Jim, um, you've been a treasure for Historical Society. I know that. And um, don't stop doing that. And there's lots of other, please come to the Historical Commission meetings too and, and yeah, get I, involved. I, I would love to have you. Um, we need some horse Contribute, work. particularly with some of the upcoming issues that yes. I'm sure you're very familiar with. So. Thank you. You know who to call. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. Congratulations Thank you. on overcoming your disability. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. Uh, Madam yeah. Chair, are there any of these that we can just kind of administratively approve? Uh, there are a couple of these that can go that can go quickly. Um, the Community Preservation Committee, we are not doing because there was only one applicant, which was Todd Sestari. Oh, no, excuse me. Oh. Excuse me. We have Al Rogers. I'm sorry. Al, come on up. Um, Todd has been appointed to the um, uh, appropriations. appropriations Committee, and so he is not able to serve on this board. So we have Al. So why don't we just make, I'll, I'll make a motion that we appoint Al Rogers to CPC. I'll right? second it. In the interest of moving along, yeah. that would be great. Okay. Are you familiar with the Thomas Story? <laughs> <laughs> He's familiar with the field. Al Rogers yes, has, has been uh, nominated and second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 And opposed, aye. it is unanimous. Thank you. Thank that was you, easy. Al. That was easy. <laughs> I like the more and more you speak, the more and more. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Um, Council on Aging. Uh, there are four positions opening, two full and two associate. This is for a uh, term of three year years. There are two full members and two associate. In the full member, um, Megan Carvalho is applying and two individuals are currently seeking reappointment. Marilyn Palmer, she has been an associate member and she seeks to be appointed, I'm sorry, there's only one person, yes, so Marilyn, seeking to be appointed as a full member. So if I may, so. through, 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 through you, uh, Madam Chair, um, I, I make a motion that we appoint Megan Cavallo and Marilyn Palmer as the two full members. Uh, what? Okay, before that seconded, I, I have a question um, for Mrs. Lazarus. Under associate member, we have person seeking reappointment is John Gardner. He was not able to be here. He has a, um, had a memorial service to attend, but I had wanted to know whether where he has already served, did he want to be appointed as a full member and the new individual to serve as the associate were we able to get an answer from him? I believe he applied to an associate position. Did he apply as associate? Yes, he did. Okay. Yep. All right. <coughs> Traditionally, sometimes you, after you've been an associate, you move into the full. But so he wants to be associate. Uh, Megan and Marilyn are both looking to be appointed as full. So, Madam Chair, may I amend yes. my motion? Uh, I make a motion that we appoint Megan Cavallo and Marilyn Palmer as full yeah. members. Here. Sorry. I'm sorry. Um, I'm Amy Beck, the interim director of the senior center. Uh huh, Amy. Um, we're just kind of concerned. We don't know Megan. And, and, oh, okay, good. Hi. <laughs> I wanted to make sure that you knew that. Did you go up to the mic? Please? Okay, um, Megan, why don't you come on up? And Amy, if you have a question for Megan, yeah. we will try to do that quickly. Okay. Um, Amy Beck, uh, interim director at the Senior Center. Thank you. And My Megan. question for Megan is that our meetings are during the day. Mm -hmm. um, I just wanted to make sure that that was not an issue that you had with um, being able to fulfill that. Yeah, I have a, a job that's very flexible, okay. so I can. All right. Okay. Yes, that's it. Time concerned. All right. Thank you for speaking up. I didn't okay. realize. Okay. Well, second your motion. No, I have. I still. I still haven't finished okay. my, my third time trying Speed to make a motion. Here. A okay. Succinct. I'll make a motion to to appoint Megan Cavallo and Marilyn Palmer as full um, uh, members, and John Gardner as an associate member to the Council on Aging with terms expiring three in three years. Second. All right. Motion has been made and seconded. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 And of course, it is unanimous. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Thank, Thank you, you for much. waiting. Okay, good. Okay. Good luck.
was, Mrs. Palmer. Yes. Cultural okay. Council. Okay. <laughs> All right. Cultural uh, Council. Next, please. we have the Cultural Council, and this is a um, a two-year term. There are four uh, vacancies right now, and presently we have one applicant. Per, um, Mr. Sterling Worrell, who is seeking reappointment. Thank you, Mr. Worrell. So, um, I don't know that if you're seeking reappointment, I think we can probably. Yeah, I make a motion to accept Mr. There. Worrell as a uh, reappointed member to the Cultural, Cultural Council. Council for a length of two years. Second. All right. All those in favor of Sterling Worrell appointed to Cultural Council, please say aye. 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 And opposed, it is unanimous. Thank you for stepping up, Mr. Worrell, and uh, for waiting through this. So we've done this to the commission. Uh, Marathon Fund Committee, we are going to postpone because uh, the three applicants, none of them can be here. Okay. So we will probably be doing that at a later meeting. Um, Marathon Committee. This is a three-year term. There are three vacancies. They are at large positions. Um, we have two new individuals applying, Sarah Viadero and John Coutinho, who I've never met. Uh, <laughs> Sarah cannot uh, be here tonight. And there are three individuals seeking reappointment, Charles Wallace, Alexander Danahy, and Jane Goodman. Um, Madam Chairman, I, I would um, uh, gracefully pull my name from the list. I, when I originally signed up, it said that there were two open positions, and that's why I put my, my name in. I'll second it. <laughs> <laughs> and um, uh, now that I see that, th that there were three, and then there were three who were seeking reappointment, it's, there's, there's no need for me. So we're sure that on this, that Mrs. Goodman is interested in reapplying, right? Um, can I just speak to the chair? Mrs. Wallace. Um, Jane Goodman had a death in the family, uh -huh. uh, so she was not going to wait to see her, so she was unable to be But I can speak on her behalf. Please, say if you wish. Okay. If you wish. Jane Goodman is kind of one of those stories that you like to have in this town. She grew up here. She's, she grew up at the marathon, and for years she volunteered on things, you know, around the marathon through schools and things like that. But then she volunteered through volunteering through the BAA, and then she wanted to get on the marathon committee and, and did so. And I think it's her 20th year. Um, so she's dedicated, she's shown interest in. I'll tell you, she's done a fabulous job. She is all weekend, and you don't get volunteers like this that stand out in the cold and rain in the raw weather that we had this year, all weekend long, never mind race day. But, and another thing is her father was Harold Rathburn, who was a BAA Board of Governor years ago for several years. So it's really, and she's very interested, uh, unfortunately, her father-in-law passed away, so she wasn't able to be here this evening, but um, <clears throat> as you can see from her write-up and everything, she's had many years and is really a right-hand person to a lot of people on the committee. And, and on race day, she is at the VIP section, and we have her there through the police department. She's appointed there because she knows many of the BAA staff and, and board of governors and people that would come through that norm the normal person wouldn't be able to pick out. So I think she's done a tremendous job, and she's a real asset to our committee, and I would like to see her reappointed. Well, you know, you're telling us this about Jane brings a whole new, I, I don't know Jane personally, but I can see what a value she is. And, you know, Chuck, his law enforcement understanding that he brings to I know your committee figures out every last little detail that makes it run on the ground, and Alex has his own um, attributes he brings for needs of that race and all the organizations. So, I mean, I, I think we've just got a really a winning team here that each brings some real strengths that uh, 
uh, we wouldn't want to lose as far as I can And say. Alex goes back way back in his junior high years and he was interested. He used to go over to the center school while the wheelchair pushed around yeah, and now no. you got mobility impaired, you got uh, hand cycles now, but in yeah. those days it was only the push room. Yeah. But he would go over there and help the people there and it was Ann Marcy who was actually coordinating at the time and he he would come to meetings, to our meetings, just to see just what was going on. Yeah. And then he got on the uh, committee, and I believe in 2008, and has just been fabulous. And uh, he really adds to that whole program, and uh, certainly another asset to this committee. Yeah, you don't have to sell me on it, Alex, believe me. <laughs> Madam Chair, I'd like to make a motion to appoint Chuck Wallace, Alex Danahy, and Jane Goodman to the Marathon Committee for a term length of three years. <coughs> If I may, uh, to the chair, you know. it is um, Sari here. She's not. No. She's oh, okay. So I had to make sure right. that. No, she's right. not here. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. Then I'll second that. <laughs> All right. The motion has been made and seconded to appoint Chuck Wallace, Alex Danahy, and Jane Goodman to the marathon committee. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 And opposed, it is unanimous. And thank you thank for you. stepping up again. And I think we should have heard from Chuck, though. I don't know. Uh, it, it may not uh, Chuck. A lot of people don't know Chuck, right? She said two nice things about the other people. I, 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 I was. <laughs> Gee, I wonder why. <laughs> okay, we have an appointment for the Upper Charles Trail Committee. Uh, I'm going to give it about 15. Well, we don't have well, the, this, yeah, it's two for two. So I'll make a, so I, I, if I may make a motion to um, reappoint to, to the abutter, Eric Sonnet, and to the at large, Kenneth Parker. Second. To the Upper Charles Trails Committee for a term length of three years. All right, the motion has been made and seconded. All those two in positions, favor. Two, two, two positions, yep, two positions, two That's correct. Yep. All in favor say aye. 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 And it is unanimous, and um, it is 8 o'clock, and we have at 8 o'clock a public hearing scheduled for Grand of Locations, South Street, West Main Street, West Elm Street, Eversource Energy. Um, I would ask... Uh, uh, I'll make a motion that we open the public hearing. Open the public hearing. Second. Second. In favor, say aye. 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 And we will ask to su suspend that for just a few more... Mo are the Eversource? Anyone here for Eversource? Okay. Um, we have one more board appointment to do. So if that's acceptable, we will hold on that for just a minute and finish off with the appointments, okay? Yep. Okay. The last appointment we have is the Youth Commission. And this is a three year term. There are three vacancies. Um, several new people applying Alinda Cantry, Alinda Canty. Tracy Forensic, Stacia Crozy, Devin Rudder, and Megan Carvalho. And seeking reappointment is Tamoria Saba, who is currently serving as the chair. I know Devin was trying to make it home from the train. Did he get here? Oh. No, he did not. Okay. Not and and, uh, and Tamoria is, is away on vacation. She actually tried to ask us if we would she be in the chair. She asked us if we would hold off on this appointment till the oh, next meeting. I, I did not hear from her on that. But she did send send us the uh, a, a, um, uh, yeah, a Yeah, she sent an email, <laughs> but Elaine, I think Elaine answered it. Saying that she she sent it to the board. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's the board. Um, oh, are there other applicants who are here for that? Two people are here. Um, hmm. Okay, Carrella was okay, out. Okay, Megan. Um, well, in in that case, I'm thinking where there's one, two, three, four, five individuals, and only two people are here. What well, now? Just one. No, no two. Oh, two. Okay, right. Two. So Linda's not here. Tracy's not here. Stacy's not here, and Tamari's not. No, here. there are two people here. You, ma'am, you are. Stacia. You're Stacia and. Stacia. Alindra. Alindra. Yeah, I. Uh, is Alindra? I'm sorry. Away. Is that Linda in this world of? Alindra, Alindra can. Alindra. Alindra. Okay. Okay. And Stacy Crozy. Uh, so and we know Tamari. 
because we're already holding up. But we're going to be we're going to be redoing the um, the other one anyway. Madam Chair, I think we should proceed. I think we've got enough that we can make a decision. Yeah. I think in the interest of the fact that we have a lot of appointments and the next meeting may be a very, very busy meeting, um, I think we could proceed with this. Okay. Um, Alinda, why don't you first come up and just say a few words? And uh, Stacy, you uh, afterwards. So, Linda, you almost got appointed to the planning board, right? Right. So, obviously, I'm new to this whole procedure. <laughs> I was trying to figure out what's going on. Yeah, yeah me too. Well, <laughs> me I too. was looking. I'm like, that's not Carol DeVere. No. That's not <laughs> so, welcome. Tell us about yourself and uh, why you think you'd like to be on the, on the Youth Commission. So, um, August will make three years since my family and I moved to Hopkinton from Doylestown, Pennsylvania. Um, which is another small town, not quite as small as Hopkinton, but, um, and I have slowly been getting involved in different things around uh, town. I started working at the middle school this last year. I have a background in education. I'm a bit of a gypsy in that we have traveled around a bit, so my, most of my teaching career was in Florida. Um, I taught in Pennsylvania for a little while. We were there 11 years before we moved here. So I'm getting back into um, teaching and education, and I just love working with children. It's mm -hmm. been my entire career, so it seemed like a good fit. Did you just say you have kid, kids in school? I have three children uh, going into one, seventh, eighth, and ninth. Oh, boy. <laughs> Those are great years. Yeah. Uh, are they? <laughs> <laughs> I think you know what they are, too. <laughs> great. <Puberty>. great. <laughs> Excellent. And uh, Stacia, why don't you come and uh, just tell us a little about yourself too. We're glad to have these uh, new people get involved. Yes. Well, she's actually been involved with the with Youth Commission before, haven't you? No, I have not. Um, okay. I've been involved in other activities around town, but not with Youth Commission. Um, I've never been appointed to a board. I've never been, I've really kind of stayed out of this realm. Um, I've usually worked within volunteer activities, so. Um, my name is Stacia Frederick Crozy. Um, I've lived in town since 2004. 2000, 2004. Um, I have one child. He's in ninth grade. Um, I've been working with. I've, I've spent a lot of time with um, different um, aspects of the community. Uh, I volunteered quite a bit of time when my son was in Cub Scouts. Um, they named me Girl Friday because I tended to just kind of pick up things as we went along. At one point, I was like a webmaster. Um, for the group, um, I ran the Pinewood Derby. Um, I was a den master, um, and um, or sorry, den leader. Um, I have um, spent a lot of time with the CPAC over the last year, um, and that is the um, Special Education uh, Parent Advisory Committee. Um, and um, I have also spent quite a bit of time actually um, speaking directly with Tamaria and the group within the um, Hopkinton um, Diversity and Cultural Committee. Um, and so um, Tamori approached me and asked me what I would think about joining this, com this committee. And I think it's a wonderful opportunity. Um, I love the idea that we have the opportunity to really put something out there for kids to do within the town. I've heard it for years and years from my babysitter when my son was a child who'd had kids who graduated from Hopkinton and moved on to um, people with small children. And that's that the kids really need something very specific to do around town that's outside of like club activities and club sports. So I think this is a op great opportunity for us to really, to really uh, broach that venture. Excellent. So. Well, tomorrow, the chair, tomorrow you gave you a very good recommendation on, through, through email to us. So. Oh, that's wonderful. And um, Tamari has been very big on, you know, getting involved. And I said, how would you like me to get involved? What's the best way to do that? And she recommended this particular commission. And I think this is a great. Well, Tamari has really breathed life into that commission. And uh, really invigorated. She's got tons of enthusiasm and tons of ideas and um, tons of energy. And that's what we need. We're really lucky to have her. Madam Chair, I would like to move to appoint Alinda Cantry, Stacia Crozy, and Tamari Saba to the Youth Commission for a term length of three years. Second. Motion has been made and seconded. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 And opposed, it is unanimous. Thank you, Alindra, and thank you, Stacia, and good luck.
We're, we're lucky to have you both. Okay, excellent. So, thank you, Eversource, for being just a little bit patient with us here. Um, just very, very quickly, we have uh, a street acceptance order of taking. This is a, an affirmation of the vote taken at town meeting. Uh, the Board of Selectmen will consider voting pursuant to Article 44 of the May 7, 2018 annual town meeting to execute orders have taken of the following private ways, Legacy Farm South, Cobbler's Way, and Singletary Way, together with easements for drainage utilities and other purposes. That's right. We've, uh, there's one more page here. We've got, got a couple yeah. more points. We need the Inspector of Animals and the oh. Control Officer and Principal no, Assessor. No, no, that, that is, oh, I'm sorry, is it? I thought that was later on in the agenda. It is now. Okay, well, um, I would we'll just like put that to, next to put. I would like to move those till a little later and get the Eversource people taken care of, perhaps. Yeah, that's fine. Because they are here. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Um, we'll hold off on those other appointments uh, and let's let's get Eversource done. Can we can we do the street acceptance though? Are there questions on the street acceptance? No. Madam Chair, I move that the Board of Selectmen approve the street acceptance uh, orders of taking as requested in the agenda. Is there a motion? Is there a motion? Uh, uh, Madam Chair, I move that the Board of Selectmen vote pursuant to Article 44 of the May 7, 2018 annual town meeting to execute orders of taking of the following private ways. Legacy Farm South from East Main Street to Clinton Street, Cobbler's Way from Front Street to Dead End, Singletary Way from Wedgwood Drive to Dead End together with easements for drainage, utility, and other purposes. Is there a second? Second. Second. Motion has been made and seconded. All those in favor? Madam Chair, a quick question, yes. if I could, please, for Mrs. Yes. Lazarus. No. Uh, are we all good there? Yes. Okay. okay. All right. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 And opposed, it is unanimous for the street acceptance. Okay. Uh, let's move to the uh, previously scheduled 8 p.m. public hearing. Grants of location South Street, West Main Street, and West Elm Street for Eversource Energy. Um, the Board of Selectmen will consider acting on two petitions submitted by Eversource as follows. One, a petition requesting permission to locate two poles on West Elm Street, southwesterly side approximately 170 feet northwest of South Street. And two, a petition for the purpose of obtaining grants of location to install approximately 12,140 feet of conduit and 27 manholes within South Street, West Elm Street, and West Main Street. If desirable by the town, some work may be done at night. Um, folks, would you like to come up? Good evening. My name is Renee Banks-Clark. I'm the right-of-way agent for Eversource, and I'm here with um, my colleague, um, Kelly, Kelly Ann. Ann. <laughs> I'm sorry. That's okay. Um, also here, we have another colleague, Joanna O'Leary, who's the community from Community Relations. So basically, you guys know we built the station down on South Street. We're looking to increase reliability and capacity. We're actually looking to install the manhole conduit system that goes along with that to allow our infrastructure in there. Um, we've met with DPW several times, um, revised plans, you know, accommodated everything they need to be in the streets and satisfactory to, what is it, water sewer, the um, highway department and public works so that we're all on the same page, everything, we've answered all their construction questions. Um, and I apologize, this is the first I've seen of this, but John Westerling did forward a recommendation to the board um, mm -hmm. through an email. And I'm looking at it, we agree with all the conditions on here. Um, I'm just gonna read it quick. The first one would be that we've agreed to pay for a third party inspector that will be on site while we're working there. Um, that inspector will be somebody appointed by the town of Hopkinton, but we'll cover the charge for that. The second item he has says that Eversource will pay for any necessary overtime for the DPW when responding to infrastructure emergencies after normal working hours. The only comment I want to make there is we will certainly do that, but I do want it noted that that's very clear only if it's an Eversource caused emergency. It's just vaguely worded here. If, it, if you have Verizon or somebody else out there digging and they dig stuff up, 
certainly will respond to the emergency and take care of our stuff. But if it's not something that we caused or were at fault with, I, you know, I want it clear that this just doesn't say we'll pay for any emergency calls. Mm -hmm. So I think that's kind of a reasonable ask on our end. Um, and the rest of it, it was just saying we will respond to any emergency situation. We have gone over how we would handle um, moving any of our infrastructure that's in the way if they have to dig too close or have to get into certain areas in the street. And then the, um, the DPW obviously requires street opening permits before we can begin any work. We are looking to work some night work outside your noise ordinance hours as well, and we will do that under the direction of the police department as far as what hours you know, they want us to work. I know you have a heavy travel the area, the commuting hours and daytime hours aren't ideal over there for us to be in the streets. Um, and we have met several months ago with police and fire to discuss that and also um, maintaining travel lanes and driveway openings to all the businesses along the way while we're working too. So that's, that's pretty much it. Excuse me, Mr. Kamala. Go through the chair. Did, did, did we ever get that double pole fixed on West Elm Street? I, know there's double I, did, pole I didn't know there was any issues with double poles in town. Yeah. <laughs> we addressed all of those after our last meeting with you guys. The only double pole we had left was the one you had asked us not to move at the time. I think that was in front of the library. So anything since what we fixed before that Beautiful. may have been like the March storm or anything we're catching up on now. But yeah. the, all the older stuff since our last meeting has been addressed by us and Verizon. No, I just thought it was. I just thought it was to do it here again. I just thought it was interesting because you're talking about putting a pole just about where I was thinking about it in my head, about 170 feet. That's just about where that one was for a while. Good. Thank you very much. Do you have a sense of when this work will be taking place? We'd like to start as soon as we could get permits. Um, we'd like to work through the summer into the November uh -huh. moratorium date, and then, of course, DPW will dictate weather dependent if we can work a little past that. As much as we can get done and get ahead this year will allow us to finish pretty quickly next spring when we can start again. Yeah. Um, I mean, both South Street and West Main are major traffic thoroughfares during working hours. So with the exception of that one residence that's there on the corner of uh, West Elm and Main, and I don't know how long business um, Cliff's family is going to be there. That's the I think you sold that's already. The only, well, you sold, that's, that's the only on residence. That's, no, that's, no. that's the only residence. No, 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 you're right. But where's South Street, Claire? That, that's South Street, West, West Elm. Yeah, but it's the end of Lumber. Some no. Of, isn't some of this it's like, the end of That's Lumber? 900 feet away yeah. from what I you're talking about. I thought some of it was at, at Lumber, yeah. too. No? It goes, yeah, it goes, it goes down. We kind of end like long. just right, right around Lumber. We did know there was that one residential mm -hmm. customer that didn't want us at night in front of his house. But again, if he's actually sold, he'll be selling shortly. We can certainly work around that and do that little section in the daytime. Again, you know, right. the police department. I mean, we are looking to work nights. And what we'll do is have a few different, um, two or three different crews out there. Yeah. And again, what police and DPW prefer, we can kind of move them along this way or start at each end and move forward. We'd yeah. like to get the manholes in. Yeah. The condo will be easier to put in later. Claire is right. Yeah. We did have, we did talk about Cliff's residence. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. But he may not be there. Because, well, I mean, he's, he's the only <laughs> residence in that area that would be affected by night work. And by and large, everybody else Whether really wanted at night because it would be hard. But the, we agreed then, Cliff, if you have an issue or whoever has an issue, we'll let the police it. know and we will address it. And these folks will address it too. So Yeah. <laughs> and, and that's like at the very end of the project. It's not the center right. of it. So yeah. if there's that small portion we have to do during the day, that's not... Not an issue or problem for us. He was given notice to this, right? Yes, yes. And he's not here to fight it, so. Well, but, but well, and I, yeah, but we got to do his job for him, so. Sure, I'm happy to take that to the project manager, make sure that it's documented so that regardless of who's on the project and who's not, yeah. that that one resident or, and anybody else that might move in is considered with our work. Uh, yeah. yeah, and that was the agreement we had. Right. That, to your point, Mrs. Ryan. Well, uh, and I believe that the that the site plan for the new development that's going at Warriors House has already it's gone before the planning board already. Right. Anyway. Yeah, so it's depending on when you do the work, there may lo no longer be a resident there so it would Correct. be a non-issue but you'll you'll address that when the time comes yeah absolutely okay. Okay. 
Ready for a vote? All right. Public hearing. Public hearing. Public hearing. Public hearing. Um, oh, oh, I just also want to get too many pieces of paper here. There was a comment to about sign boards and all being put up so that the public knows ahead of time that there's going to be this construction. And yep, and again, we'll work with the PW and police to make sure you know we comply with what they're recommending as well. Yep. Okay. If there are no further questions, I will entertain a motion to can't find the motions document. Madam Chair, I think we should ask if there's any members of the public that want to be heard. Are there members of the public? You are right, Mr. Herr. Seeing none. Madam Chair, I move that we close the public hearing. Second. Okay. Thank you. Do I need to vote that? Do yep. we need to vote the public? All right. Uh, um, motion has been made and seconded to close the public hearing. All those in favor of closing the hearing say aye. 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 All right. And it is unanimous. So. Is there a motion, Mr. Kamal? Is there a motion? I can't find a motion. Yes. Document. Madam Chair, I'll make a motion. Yeah. Make a motion. Can I preempt your motion you see, you to, see you. to yeah. Ms. O'Brien, Joanne O'Brien? Say thank you for no squaring leader. away these uh, double pulls. I, I don't know if you know or not, I had a little issue with it. And uh, I appreciate all your hard work and taking care of it. I can't give him credit. <laughs> never have, never will. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so right, Madam okay. Chair. Uh, I'll request a motion to approve grants of location to install conduit and manholes within South Street, West Elm Street, and West Main Street, and grants of location to install two new poles within West Elm Street as further described in the petition submitted. That's a part of my motion to include than the conditions as outlined by the Department of Public Works Director John Westerling. Second. Mm -hmm. All right. well, let me let me finish my motion though. Okay. With the understanding that the expenses as discussed in this public hearing are reasonable and as mentioned. Okay? Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. That is the motion. Is that seconded? Absolutely. It's been saying that by Mr. Catino? Absolutely. Okay. Motion has been made and seconded. Mm. Oh. <laughs> Shit. Are we ready for a vote? Yes. Okay. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 And opposed, it is unanimous and so voted. Um, it's nice to see the town of Eversource getting along so well together. <laughs> I'm Thank sorry you. for calling you by the wrong name. It's <laughs> leery. And uh, okay. the next ever source is going to be a public hearing scheduled for 8.30, so we have a couple of minutes the last few folks to, to hold, and we can go back to some of the appointments. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I can move these around, Mr. Mr. Uh, Kamala, also. We've yes. only got yeah. like nine minutes it, it, to work it, it, with. Your meeting. Yes. yes. Madam Chair, I move that the Board of Selectmen uh, reappoint uh, the Special Officers, uh, Town Council, and Labor Council. Second. Existing uh, incumbent Town Council, Labor Council, and Special Officers. Second. And those are for the Public mm -hmm. Town Council is Miaris and Harrington. An appointment for one year. Labor Council is Nicholas Anastasopoulos of Mirko Connell. Nick. Nick. Appointment for one year and special officers. Three year terms, expiring terms. Gerard Jones, Patrick O'Brien, Nicole Corsi, Michael Prescott, and Ken Clark. So the motion to reappoint has been made and seconded. And thumbs up by the lieutenant. All right. Thank you. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 And opposed, that is unanimous. Thank you. And going back, um, affirmed town manager appointments. Uh, there are three to be affirmed, animal control officer, inspector of animals, and principal assessor. Um, 
think we can take these individually. The inspector of animals is Elizabeth Jeffers, reappoint as animal inspector for the town of Hopkinton for a one-year term per Mass General Law, Chapter 129, Section 15. Her term of appointment will be valid from July 1st, 2018 through July 1st, 2019. Uh, Mr. Kamala, do you wish to speak to this? Yes, through the chair, if I may clarify, in fact, the town manager is making a recommendation to the Division of Animal Health, and I am seeking the board's affirmation of that recommendation. And then they make the ultimate decision? Yes. <laughs> Are you just doing that for Brendan's sake now? <laughs> yes. Yes. Okay, so we're just making a recommendation in the Appointment is done by the State Board of Animal Health. Okay. All right. Um, Madam Chair, I move that we affirm the town manager's recommendation uh, for the inspector of animals to be Elizabeth Jeffers. Second. Okay. Um, motion has been made and seconded. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 And opposed, that is unanimous. Um, uh, our principal assessor, uh, is Mr. John Knees. Uh, uh, we are looking to reappoint him as principal assessor for a three-year term according to Mass General Law, Chapter 41, Section 24. His term of not more than three years will be valid from January 5th, 2018 through, Jan through July 5th, 2021. Mr. Kamalo, any uh, remarks or through the chair, uh, John Nis has been a fabulous uh, addition to Town Hall. Uh, he has worked productively with Town Hall staff as well as with the new members of the Board of Assessors and he's uh, taken the town through a wonderful process with the state for um, reassessing our values. Yeah, he's, he's helped me a lot, coming up to speed with some of that stuff too, he's been great. He's a great teacher. Yeah. I'll make a motion to uh, reappoint uh, John Nees as principal assessor for a three-year term expiring July 5th, 2021. Second that. <clears throat> All right, motion has been made and seconded for the reappointment of John Nees as principal assessor. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 And opposed, that is unanimous. Okay. Uh, in, uh, animal control officer, and I will have to be pausing this in five minutes to open the public hearing for Eversource, but uh, affirming the town manager appointment animal control officer, William Proctor, reappoint as the animal control officer for the town of Hopkinton for a one-year term per Mass General Law, Chapter 140, Section 151. His term of appointment will be valid from July 1st, 2018 through July 1st, 2019. Uh, Mr. Kamala, do you want to speak to this at all? Yes, through the chair. Um, Bill Proctor, in fact, has been uh, with the town for 29 years. And um, I also want to take this opportunity to um, thank the the residents of the town that have uh, supported our animal control division, uh, including sending uh, comments to my office uh, regarding how we can continue to improve the quality of service provided by the office. I want to stress that what I'm actually requesting the board to do is to affirm the appointment. Uh, there are issues that have been identified in terms of how we can improve our service delivery going forward. Uh, we want to continue working with the team at Town Hall as well, with, as, well as with the uh, residents in, in, in making sure that we, we address these issues. These are issues that we, we take seriously, uh, I think, based on the work that we ask uh, Bill, Bill Proctor to do going forward. Uh, I am or uh, making a positive recommendation to the board to affirm his appointment. Again, this does not affect any other issues that the town is working on with Bill and the residents. Madam Chair, Mr. who does the animal control officer report to directly? Reports to the director of town operations and uh, land use, the land answers. Okay, and is that control or that reporting structure been in place just a couple of years now, right? Right. Okay. 
Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Other questions from the board? Yeah, I, no, I just want to say that uh, th thank you very much for, your, for your, your comments because we have been getting, we did get a lot of comments from, from, the, from the public and uh, I just want to make sure that uh, we um, do take everything seriously and uh, do the best we can going forward. Is there a motion? Please to um, affirm the reappointment. Madam Chair, uh, following Mr. Kamala's recommendation to reappoint at this time, uh, I would move that the Board of Selectmen affirm the appointment of William Proctor to, as the Animal Control Officer. For a one year term? For a one year term. <coughs> I will second that. Madam Chair, comments to the motion, please. Mr. Herb, uh, so obviously there's you know a, a fair bit of uh, dialogue in the community uh, and within the state uh, specific to uh, situations that in town that have uh, caused a great deal of concern um, we take uh, those uh, uh, that input very seriously and we share the concerns um, of many people in Hockington and around the Commonwealth, around New England for that matter. And, uh, you know, we will be very um, uh, careful and considerate and uh, provide the necessary oversight going forward that we need to do um, to continue to resolve any issues that may be outstanding. I would echo Mr. Herr's uh, comments. I think there's been a tremendous amount of concern uh, within the town, outside of the town, within this board, for um, some circumstances that have, for whatever reason, been allowed to continue in this town for a very long time. And um, I think Hopkinson's better than that. Um, I think we need to make sure that we, going forward, run every aspect of our town in a way that is um, top-notch. And so I think, I, I certainly hope and trust that uh, we will all be working together to make sure that we bring all of our operations up, up to the highest level, both um, because this is what the townspeople expect and um, this is the way that we, we need to be doing business. So. Um, the motion has been made and seconded. Are there any other comments? Hearing none, uh, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 And opposed, it is unanimous. Okay, and it is also one minute past 8.30. Uh, my apologies, we are opening a public hearing for uh, Eversource, a grant of location for East Main Street Eversource Energy, the Board of Selectmen will consider acting on a petition submitted by Eversource Energy for the purpose of obtaining grant of location to install approximately 71 feet of conduit in East Main Street. Location is approximately 1,213 feet west of the Legacy Farms North and South slash East Main Street intersection. Welcome again. Thank you. Again, my name is Renee Banks-Clark from Eversource. And these are uh, electric services for uh, solar panels at 9 Franklin Road. Oh, I'm sorry. Did I not open the... Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Excuse me, Renee. <laughs> okay. uh, I announced it. Uh, I'm new <laughs> this job. <laughs> we need to formally open the public okay. hearing. Uh, is there a motion, please, to open the public hearing? So moved. So Second. seconded. All right. All those in favor of opening Aye. the public hearing. Aye. Aye. Thank you very much. My apologies. No yes. My name is Renee Banks Clark, and I'm the right of way agent for right of for Eversource, and we're here to request a grant of location for uh, to provide electric service for solar panels at Nine Franklin Road. Madam Chair. <coughs> Mr. Herb. I recuse myself, okay. given my profession. See, we do have a uh, 
an email here from the DPW director. DPW has only one comment on this petition. Every source will be required to obtain a road opening permit from the DPW, which I'm sure you are aware of. Yes. Um, are there questions or comments from the board? No. So, this is on, what did we say, Wilson East Street? East Main. East Main. This would be across Legacy, um, Roger Mezzins. Okay. So okay. This isn't the one on uh, Wilson Street that there was some no. back and forth. Okay. No. Okay. Um, I, I, I just had a question. I guess I don't even need to ask this because those that are the higher pay grade than I have already <laughs> answered it. I noticed that our town engineer had asked about the diagonal, the diagonal cut in the road as opposed to going straight across and I believe Eversource answered that uh, if they did a straight a cut a, a cross cut it would involve a manhole cover in the driveway um, but we didn't didn't really get back from um, our DPW director as whether um, I know Mr. Del Torrio was concerned that the repaving might involve a full repaving and rather than just the just the strip, but we never heard back from DPW as to whether that could be accommodated or whether it was going to have to be a full pavement. I believe there's a standard protocol in effect for when there's a cut in the roadway. And so they did not comment on that. Okay. Right. Well. But I just want to mention that it is an underground connection and not overhead. Right. So it yeah. is underground. Yeah. So, and Are there, if there are no questions, um, I would entertain a motion to close the public hearing. So moved. Second. Second, okay. There is a motion which has been seconded to close the public hearing. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 And oppose that is so unanimous, okay. That's right, did we go to the public or did we go to them now? Did we, did we go to the public? We, this was the public hearing. No, no, we, we, we failed to ask if there oh, were if any there are public, of the public if there are that wish to. We can suspend it. So, just being sure. No? Okay. Okay. Then I request a motion to approve a grant of location to install conduit underneath East Main Street as further described in the petition submitted. So moved. Second. Has been moved and seconded. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 And oppose that is unanimous. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you very much. Okay. Have a good night. Thank you. Okay. We are ahead of schedule. It's so easy when there are no double poles. I know. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thanks for coming. Uh, town manager's report. Mr. Kamala, what do you have for us tonight? Yes. Um, good news. I think this is a moment of celebration for the community. Uh, we are reporting that the invitational entries that were shared uh, and utilized by the t local town uh, organizations uh, raised um, a, a greater amount of funds for the community uh, to serve community uh, interests uh, and programs greater than what uh, we had in the last three or four years. And that number now is about 300,000. Wow. Awesome. Mr. Kamala, was there a target amount the organizations were given? Yes, the target amount was uh, 5,000. I believe there were only two instances where uh, the organization raised less than the 5,000. There were some instances where the organizations raised over 10 more. grand. A lot more. Yeah. yeah. Pay invitational entry. So it looks like there was a total that came in of $306,619.06. Yes. About that six cents. <laughs> yeah. And, and again, um, credit goes to the board for having had the foresight to uh, organize this program, engage local organizations, uh, and identify are programs that are now funded or supported through through the invitational interest. Mm -hmm. Semper Fi, $14,000. Yeah. 
But you know, for some of these smaller organizations, I mean, that, that represents a huge piece of, piece of their budget. So it's really nice. That, I, will, uh, I will continue to do my best to get as many as we can yeah. for the town. Yeah, yeah that, that, that can mean a lot. So that's great. Okay, uh, next item, uh, great news, Mr. Hay. The next Board of Selectmen meeting will be a town hall. As of July 16th, all town offices will be fully operational at 18 Main Street. We started moving in groups on July 4th. Excellent. No, just after July 4th. July 4th, I was going Just say. after. <laughs> you can have the air conditioner too. It was in there today, and all the other rooms have air conditioners except the selectmen's room. Hot as blazes. <laughs> That's Dave's long-term project. He's working on that. Long-term? Yeah. 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 He'll, be, he'll be ready by December. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Mm. So, for those watching at home, next Selectman's meeting, August 7th, will be in New Old Town Hall. Yes. Sounds good. Yes, and, and, and again, as we stated uh, in our public announcement, we are inviting the public to come and see your beautiful asset, repainted, renovated, and redesigned. And is that ongoing, or are you just saying come in any time, you're not having any time or anything? We, we, we plan to schedule an open house in the near future. The door was locked today. But <laughs> After the 16th, all doors will be open. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, this doesn't say liaison reports, uh, but usually we do do reports in this time. Um, are there any reports? I don't have any. Mm -hmm. Summertime, kind of slow. No, I don't have any. No, I don't think I have any either. None for me. Well, I will report the Historical Commission has contacted the board um, because there, ha there has been contact from tribal representatives about there possibly being some archaeological issues on the uh, Chamberlain Street property, which hopefully the town will be able to investigate. Um, There's what? Indications that there may be some Indian archaeological sites um, on the Chamberlain Wayland development. So, interesting. 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 So, um, board. Is that what the turtles they found? No, I don't Street? know. These uh, are Simon's board invites. I just wanted to mention one board invite which was not included in our packet, but we did get it in emails, which is the Mass Municipal Associations having their summer mass municipal meeting this Thursday on July 12th at the East Bay Grill in Plymouth from 6 to 8.30, and they are having a speaker on the Me Too movement on public officials' um, response to workplace uh, security and, and issues, and it's usually a very good good meeting with a speaker and some good networking, nice to talk to other, other selectmen and Asian, get ideas. Yeah. So um, they do are they are looking for RSVPs, but anyway, I, I would recommend it. I already sent back. I, I, I okay. some of those Future board items. Does anyone have uh, board items to mention? No. Parking. 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 Mm -hmm. okay. All right. Seeing nothing else, I will entertain a motion. Sorry. To adjourn. Um, so moved. Seconded. Moved and seconded. And August, next, what's our next, our next meeting will be August 7th. Uh, and according mm. to Mr. Kamala, we will be in our own town hall. August 7th. 7th. Motion has been made and seconded to adjourn. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Is there public comments at all? About adjourning? <laughs> no, about just in general public comments about issues in um, well, we did have our public forum in the morning, in the morning, in the, in the beginning, <laughs> seemed like here. a long time ago. She's here. We, um, we, we could certainly do that quickly. It's early. Uh, let's, let's rescind that adjournment vote for a minute. Come on up real quick. I think I, I sent an e a general email to the Board of Selectmen and, and I talked to you as well, um, Mr. Kamalo, about McDermott Path. You are? 
I'm Michelle Midkiff, uh, to McDermott Lane. Okay. Um, Thank you, Michelle. And I just wanted to raise awareness regarding McDermott Path that's going in with the Upper Charles Trail Committee. Um, it's one of the three different paths that they are trying to, they're trying to connect Milford bike path to Ashland and all these different things, which is fantastic. I do definitely enjoy the trails that are in town. This one in particular, this that they are working on right now, just happens to be right in front of my house. <laughs> and um, I had just some concerns about privacy issues and um, lack of remunerations that are planned as of this moment where they're continuing to blaze this trail and open it to the public and you can see right into my kitchen <laughs> along the path as well as you know watching my kids play in in the yard and it goes right through my neighbor's backyard and it's about 15 feet from an actual residential house um, I've been to the Upper Charles Trail Committee meetings I've talked to them I've walked the path with them I have really been involved in them in the planning process throughout this entire thing and they really do not seem open to my privacy concerns so um, I'm coming to you because I need to have some reassurances that when I have an argument with my husband the whole town will be able to listen in <laughs> or you know I'm having my kids get ready for sports and make sure everyone's shades are pulled and you know I'm just really concerned about the privacy aspect of it as they continue once they said once they put gravel down to go down connect Hopkins School to McDermott Path it will be open to the public and um, there's not been any talk about how they're going to protect my privacy or that of my neighbors too, one of them who cannot be here tonight because she's got three very disabled children, so she doesn't have a lot of childcare. Um, and my other neighbor is not in town all that often, but it is about 15 to 20 feet from his entire house. So people walking right past his house, looking right into my kitchen, going right through my neighbor's backyard with no plans to uh, well, one of the things that Mr. Hur has always said is trails, trees, and trash come up in this town. <laughs> if I may quote you, sir. And um, yeah, I'm on the Upper Charles Trail. I thought I recognized you. Yeah, I think I've seen you at a couple of those yeah. meetings. Yeah. And um, yeah, and, and that's one of the things is that. Yes, I can update people when I want to get done. Uh, oh, don't want to interact. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we, we really try to do as much mitigation as possible. Um, that that land was was given to the town as part of the deal to build to build those houses there. Um, I and, understand. And yes. it was and it was it was it was a um, a real uh, crown jewel for for the Upper Charles Trail. I understand. To, it's to, a to get location that wise, it connects because perfectly. It connected right into the schools, and it gave the kids a, a, a really great cut through to to be able to get in and out of schools and everything else. Um, you know, I'm sure that that uh, that they they can do something to uh, remediate some of it, um, but it was just it was one of those. Yeah, uh, you know, I don't know what to, what to really say. Uh, it is you know, a prime piece of property, and I to understand. And I'm not against trails at all in any way, shape, or form. But even when the guys are out there working, you know, my kids are playing basketball, and they can hear our conversations in our driveway. Um, it really does take away from our. <laughs> our ability to act, interact as a family or have guests over or just play in our own yard when it's kind of on display for anyone. And I understand that it's not a place where people kind of like congregate at all, but you know, I've seen the Milford bike path and it is a very busy right, throughway. This is not, if I may do the chair. And if, it, if it's yeah, going to connect. We get, well, we get, we get this a lot. It, we, we, they were talking about the dog park and people say, well, it's going to be a thoroughfare. You know, and even if the dog park is completely packed in a day, there might be a hundred people, which comes down to be about uh, eight cars an hour. You know, and that and that's that. You know, and and when we talk, we, when, when we try to compare a, a gravel trail that 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 hooks up, it hooks up a school to a to a street. But I was told this was going to be a be, level five asphalt. Uh, right, yeah. but even, <laughs> even 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 at that, you know, it it doesn't it it still goes nowhere. You know, it, we're not like a Milford trail that actually attaches and goes from one place to another. One of the tough things about, about the Upper Charles Trail right now is we've got uh, a quarter of a mile one, which is a really big one, and then we have a 200 feet, and we get 500 feet, and then we had a, we had six months of discussion over building a 50 footer. Um, so, so just to, 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 to uh, you know, they they really right now go nowhere. 
And so there really aren't going to be a lot of people, but it just gives people a chance to go from one spot of the town to another a little more easily. But there's and I, I do understand that, but at the people. same time, if, while they're passing through, they're checking out everything in my house. <laughs> so, Madam Chair, in the yeah. spirit of public comment yeah. portion of the meeting, which mm -hmm. we're kind of doing here, I know. We didn't um, have it seems there's a, there's a disconnect somewhere. I mean, this 15 yeah. feet she's talking about sounds I, way I, inside I, setbacks. If, if you, I if you, and I invite you to all go look at it. It really is 15 to 20 from his entire house. Yeah. I I mean, there's like his entire side of his house is so, so 10 to 15 feet. So continuing in the public comment spirit here and without getting into a lot of dialogue back and forth, I would charge the town manager's office with figuring out why these setbacks don't seem to be making sense to me anyway and find out where we are with the town manager's office interacting in this dialogue here and not... We, we can't get into a debate tonight, or we can't get into an issue I just issue wanted tonight. it on record that I'm very yeah. concerned about privacy. So what I can I do, what we sure, can do is we can delegate the town manager's office, and let's figure out what's going on here. I had Something a map, but I didn't bring it to you. I've had many, many, many conversations with the masters. Many. Yes, there. Conversations yeah. with the masters about this. And um, I assure you that it, it is definitely It is my understanding that the, the three final <laughs> phases of the plan come onto your laps, that you get to choose which direction the path ultimately takes <laughs> so I want to make sure that you are aware of that Mr. Gamal. yes um, again thank you so much for bringing your concerns to our attention I'm glad we finally meet yes um, I, I, again as I've been saying we take your concerns very seriously uh, we have been in dialogue with the chair of the upper Charles Charles committee uh, as you have seen from her emails, we have really asked you to engage with you and your neighbors. I have not uh, heard I'm, from I'm looking, yet, yes. yes. <laughs> and, and I'm looking forward to Elaine and I visiting your neighborhood uh, okay. soon, together with Jane. Thank you Jane so much. Yeah. So, so, so my, my point stands, we have an issue that's been brought to our attention. These setbacks don't make sense to me based on where they are in town. Uh, and then I just heard that the, Mr. Kamal has directed the chair of that committee to reach out, and no one's heard from that person yet. So, Mr. Kamal, there is a disconnect here that we need you to fix. Yeah, we'll, we'll work with you. Okay. So I guess yes. that would be maybe a future board agenda item. And it would be a future board agenda item that's not fixed soon. Yeah, and, and I think we should have a broader discussion. We touched on this a couple weeks ago and we went into the deer run thing that there's an awful lot of disconnect in this whole trail planning process and it's it's engendering lots of angst on the part of residents there's rumors that aren't true um and then there's an aspect of yeah well we can because we have a right to do this but maybe just because you have a right doesn't mean you should um i i just really think we need to have a a more coordinated trail and, and we've already the tasked process. the town manager's office with that but we already have we actually you know with the, that's something the upper charles trails committee has been asking for for about three years now and they drafted up um a uh a, a charter for a new for a new uh, uh committee that actually it's a it's a trails committee as opposed to just upper charles and we've been we've been really trying to get that through so I, I maybe that would be an, a, a uh, a, uh, an agenda item. I'll ask for that. Yeah, one. So, so let's look into a trails committee as opposed to just the because the Upper Charles Trails Committee is just one spot, and they're asked to do a lot of different things outside of their purview, which is just this one connector from Ashland to Milford. And you know, when we hear residents that suddenly say so they're building something, and, and it just I would like to see a whole master plan of what the trails are, where they're planned. And I know there's part they haven't figured out yet, but the ones Most that there's a the point. Out. That, that's the problem. Most of it hasn't been figured out. Hasn't been figured out. Because we, we're still trying to buy pieces to try and hook it up. Yes, right. That's why. But we're still yeah, starting to pay. <laughs> Thank you for coming. I think it's a discussion for another day, but we definitely need to have a broader discussion about this and, and really have a coordinated effort. Motion to adjourn. That was a master plan, not a master's plan. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you, Michelle. We did have a motion to adjourn, which has okay. been seconded. Yeah. All those in favor, <laughs> signify by saying aye. 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 And opposed. Thank you, everyone. All right. Thank you. We got some things to sign.